Masterclass is a bit of a strong word. I would by no means call myself a master in anything in this world, but I just used it for SEO reasons. Basically this video, I've been using the Lumex GH5 for three years now for all of my commercial and personal shoots around the world in harsh climates, harsh environments for big clients. And I thought I would make one video, a one-stop shop for you guys to get the most out of your Panasonic GH5 rather than having to hop around. So you'll see it's divided up into chapters below. So feel free to skip to whatever information you want or sit back and watch the whole thing. Everything I've learned about the Panasonic GH5 over the last three years. Leave any questions in the comments below and I'll get back to you. And I hope this video is helpful for some of you out there. As quickly as possible, I'm gonna run you guys through my GH5 settings for about 90% of the shoots that I do. By no means is this the only way to set up the GH5, but I feel like I've had great success with these settings, so I will run you guys through them very quickly. Start out, we wanna set this system frequency to 24 hertz or cinema mode. Then we'll go up to the record format. I set it at MOV, and then down in the record quality I do, 4K 428-bit long GOP at 100 megabytes per second. Now down to photo style, CIND with contrast at minus one, sharpness at minus five, noise reduction at zero, saturation at minus one, and hue at zero. That is my color profile. Exposure mode always set in manual. I always shoot in manual exposure and I think that makes a huge difference. Variable frame rate is set to 60 frames per second and I have the SS or gain operation at angle. So when it's at 180 degrees, that means my shutter will automatically double the frame rate that I'm shooting in and that's the way I like to keep it. I'm gonna quickly, quickly show you guys here in Premiere Pro how I export my GH5 footage. So let's say I have a clip here that I wanna use. I shot this in 4K, 24 frames a second, or 60 frames a second converted down to 24. And here we go, yep, nice, beautiful clip. So this is the source monitor here. I select the in point with an I and the out point with an O for out. And by selecting just this part, I get drag video only because I don't want audio for this. So I'm gonna drag the video over here, and it's if I drag it over this icon, it's gonna create a new sequence with the exact settings of this video. So I'll drag it, drop it, boom. Here we go, we've got a sequence set up perfectly for the settings that I shot this video in. Uh, for the sake of time, I'm not gonna color correct or anything. Uh, I'm just gonna show you guys how I export. So I'm, again, I'm gonna press I on my keyboard for in, and it's gonna set the in point. And I'm gonna go, okay, I want to the video to end right here, and I'm gonna press O for the out point. So now I have my video, um, I didn't really put much effort into this, obviously. File, head up to export and media. Um, so I already have presets right here for my exports, but I'll just run you guys through from scratch how I set that up. So the width and the height are good, this is 4K. Um, that's because we dragged our sequence in and it matched it. So that is all fine. Um, we'll come down here, frame rate 24, that's good. Progressive field order, aspect ratio square. Let's go render at maximum depth just to get max quality out of this. And then here we're gonna unselect this profile and switch it to high. Scroll down even further and we're gonna switch this to VBR two pass to get the max quality. And I set mine to 50. Um, it's a little bit overkill for YouTube. Some might say it's underkill. Again, with this video, these are my settings. I know it's not it's not the way that everyone exports it. I'm sure there'll be some comments of people who do it differently, and that's fine. I'm just showing you guys how I get my result. And then up here, you can change the name to, oh, computer struggling there. Exported video, boom, cool. So that looks all good. We've got a 50, VBR two pass right here, and then we change the profile to high. That's pretty much it. And then once you do that, if you wanna create a preset out of that, you just click save preset right here and write whatever you want. Seeing as I already have mine, I'm just gonna leave it. And then you are good to go. You just press export and your video will be on its way. To start out, we'll open up the menu and I'm gonna show you guys a setting that's very important for me at least, and it's the auto review. I wanna make sure that my auto review is on and I can put it to any time that you want. I choose two seconds. That means when I take a photo, 
it's going to stay on my screen there for two seconds and I'll be able to see it. And that is very helpful. The next setting, just under auto review in this I menu, you will find constant preview. And you want constant preview on, or at least I do, because it shows me on my screen as I make changes, my image will actually get darker. When it's off, you won't see that change until you take a photo. So those are two very important settings to start out for photography. And then we will go up here into the photo area and I will show you my settings here. So aspect ratio, I shoot for three because that uses uh, as much as the sensor, as much of the sensor as possible. And then picture size, I do large 20 because why not? It's the biggest size. I like to shoot in raw and JPEG just to have the options. If you can edit in raw, you're better off to do so. So I would recommend raw, but having JPEG allows me to send the photos from my camera to my phone in the field and just to have the option. Photo style, I shoot Cindy, same as my video stuff. Cindy minus one on contrast, minus five sharpness minus one on saturation, that's how I do it, and that won't affect the raw shots, but it will affect the JPEGs. Um, color space, always RGB, not Adobe, but sRGB. And then metering mode, I have it on the top one, I found it to be the best for me. I dynamic, I keep it at the low setting, and then I have always long shutter no noise reduction, I keep off, not a huge fan of in-camera noise reduction. Um, Shading compensation off, diffraction compensation off. I keep the burst rate at high, though I very rarely actually use the burst rate on this camera. And for the shutter type, I like the manual shutter over the electronic shutter. I like to hear the actual camera click when I take a photo. But if you're in a, if you're somewhere where you want it to be quieter, put on the e-shutter mode and no shutter delay and bracket off down there. I basically use the SanDisk Extreme 150 megabyte per second class 10 SD cards. Uh, you can get them on Amazon, you can get them anywhere. And I think they are the best bang for your buck when it comes to the Lumix GH5. Basically these cards, I use the 64 gigabyte version of them. Um, I stop at 64 gigs cause I find I get lazy. Uh, if I use a, a card that's 128 gigabytes, I won't offload my footage as much. So. I use yeah, the 64 gigabyte version. Uh, you can, right now you can get these cards on Amazon for $16.99 US, which is insanely cheap. Um, 150 megabytes per second uh, speed is, in everything I've ever shot on my GH5, I have never had an issue with these cards. I shoot at 4K 60 frames per second 90% uh, of the time. Never had an issue with these cards. Uh, you might get some people that say when they're shooting in 10 bit they have an issue uh, i've shot 10 bit with these as well and have never had an issue so yeah when it comes to the gh5 uh, these are the cards i would recommend link in the description below showing you the two main tools i use that are built into the gh5 to make sure that my shots are exposed properly and that is one of the key factors in getting a high quality film from your GH5, which seems obvious, but I feel like a lot of people overlook it. Like nailing your exposure as often as you can is gonna change your films, obviously. But anyways, I'm gonna run you through the two settings on the GH5 that I use the most to make sure my exposure is almost always on point. All right, I'm gonna quickly show you guys uh, how to turn these settings on. The two main settings I use to make sure my exposure is good on my GH5. So just press the center button and open up the menu here. And then basically scroll down to you see this guy, this little wrench with the C for custom. And then we scroll up to the top because we're dealing with exposure here. So we'll click on exposure. Um, I have my ISO increments set to one third, which basically allows me to climb up my ISOs, if you look in the bottom there, by not hundreds, but just in thirds instead, which gives you a bit more control which is kind of nice. So I recommend doing that. ISO increments set to one third. Then we'll scroll down here. And as I talked about, we have the zebra stripes function, zebra pattern function down here. So we'll click that and you've got basically two different custom zebra settings you can set. So if I go to set down here, you'll see that zebra one, which is what I'm on, will show me when things are 
100% over 100% exposed. So let me show you an example of that. That's this is what I leave it on all the time. So 100% boom, go back and it's on now. And you'll see as I basically open up the f-stop, you see these stripes here. That's basically telling me that this part of my image is overexposed, uh, more than 100%. So basically, I won't be able to get any detail out of that image, which is exactly what zebra stripes are all about. So you try and notice where these patches are uh, in your shot. And sometimes you will have them and there's no negotiating. You know, if there's the subjects down here in the bottom, uh, sometimes you're going to have to blow out the sky a little bit, but you really try to avoid that. Um, so once zebra stripes are on, that's good. And then we also want to turn the histogram on, which is right here. Just switch it to on and you'll see it right there. And yeah, we'll get into detail of what the histogram is actually all about. But uh, those are the two main settings that really helped me nail my exposure on the GH5. I'll quickly run you guys through how I would actually shoot a scene using the histogram and the zebra stripes to make sure that my exposure is always in a good zone in manual mode. So this isn't a particularly cool scene. It's a harmonica case in my office, so bear with me on that, but you'll get the idea of how I use these two tools. So we've got the histogram up here in the left corner, and basically what it's showing us is from zero to 100. So anything that goes past the right side means that it's overexposed and we won't be able to get any detail back from that area. And then anything on the left side of the histogram means it's too dark. And again, it's basically absolute black and absolute white on the right side. So as we see now, uh, we have all the data kind of bunched up in the left side of our histogram. And what we want is for the data to try and be evenly spread out across the histogram. So watch as I open up the exposure. Right now it's underexposed, it's all too far to the left. Let's open up the f-stop here, and you can see our data is getting spread out nice and evenly. So that is almost, and you know, we can push a little farther, a little farther, and yeah, there you go. So you'll see when we push it just a bit too far, we get the zebra stripe right there, which means that area of the image is over 100% exposed and I will have no detail from that area. Now, typically you want to avoid having these zebra stripes, right? Because it means, okay, that part of the image is overexposed. But in reality, you will have it sometimes. Um, it's just the nature of it. Like, let's say the harmonica case is a person and you're doing an interview and just you have nowhere else to shoot it and the background is bright. You might have to basically overexpose the background to make sure that this person in the foreground is exposed properly. Um, but that will mean that your image is just not properly exposed. So anyways, as, as you can see, this is how I use the two tools. Um, so I'll bring it back down to the zebra stripes go away right there. And this is a perfectly exposed balanced image right here. You can see the histogram, all the data is in between the right and left side. That is good, that makes us happy. And again, if I crank up the f-stop, you see, okay, that's underexposed. Um, and keep in mind that there's sometimes stylistic things that you're going for. Maybe you do want a darker image, um, or sometimes maybe you do want to blow out some of the highlights if you want the right side, if the sun's coming in from the right side and you want it to be bright from there. It's okay to break these rules, um, but Typically, if you're looking for a balanced, exposed image, this is how I do it. Hey guys, quick video today on my favorite lens to pair with my Lumex GH5. I probably use this lens on 80 to 90% of the shots that I take on my GH5. If I could only take one lens with me on a shoot, it would be this one, and that is the Canon 24 to 70 millimeter 2.8 lens. So disclaimer, you do need a Metabones adapter in order to use this lens uh, from micro four thirds to Canon, but it is well, well worth it. I'll let the footage speak for itself. Everything you're looking at was shot with my GH5 and this lens, but it's just my go-to and I absolutely love it. It is insanely well-built, durable, weather-sealed, sharp, and with my Metabones Speed Booster Ultra, goes to an f-stop of 2.0, so it's really great for low light. 
I purchased version two of this lens, and though I've never personally used version one, everyone online says that version two is slightly sharper, so I would recommend trying to get that one. It's not necessarily the cheapest lens. I got this for about 1800 Canadian dollars a couple of years back, but the beauty of Canon lenses is that they don't depreciate in price very quickly, so when you go to resell it, it won't have changed that much in price. A quick video today on my favorite wide lens to pair with my GH5. Noted that you also need a Metabones adapter because this lens is for Nikon or Canon, but I picked up this lens three years ago, the Tokina 11 to 16 millimeter wide angle lens. I picked it up for 400 US dollars three years ago, and it's still my favorite wide angle to pair with the GH5. I use it for all the shots that I need to get in tight spaces, and all of this stuff you're seeing right here is without a gimbal. I find paired with the GH5's in body stabilization, this lens, because it's so wide, just gives such stable shots. So overall, I just find the lens to be super crisp. It's great for small spaces. It's good in low light, especially if you have the Metabone speed booster. After the short film that I shot in Tofino, Canada, a lot of you asked how I shoot in low light with my Lumex GH5. I shot this entire video between 5.30 and 6 a.m. in the morning in the winter, so super dark conditions, and it really pushed the low light capabilities of the GH5. If you're interested in more GH5 videos, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Anyways, here are a few ways that I get the most out of my Lumex GH5 in low light. I never push the ISO above 1250 anymore. It just starts to get insanely noisy and kind of gross. If I have to choose between having a slightly darker image or cranking the ISO on the GH5 above 1250, I would take the darker image for sure. And just a reminder that sometimes dark images are okay. Not everything needs to be exposed perfectly when you're making a video. Break the rules sometimes if you think it looks good. I don't shoot in vlog at night ever. Vlog looks really bad in low light. Check out my GH5 CIND settings video below if you want to see my exact settings for low light. Fast lenses. You can't really skip over this and it is a privilege to have nice lenses, but shooting with a lens that has an f-stop of 2.8 or under is honestly very, very crucial. All of my lenses go down to a 2.0 thanks to my Metabone Speed Booster Ultra and that makes a world of difference. I know it's not the cheapest thing to get fast lenses, but it is a reality of shooting with the GH5 at night. You do need a fast lens. And then color grading and post. Don't don't overdo it. Sometimes people try to push the exposure in post and it just starts to get really messy and you see digital grain very quickly. This whole Tofino film was graded with my Moody LUT. I honestly think the GH5 can perform super well in low light. Given that it's a crop sensor, sure, full frame would be nice, but honestly, I don't have many complaints. Hey everyone, today I'm going to quickly show you how I get a moody looking grade on my Lumex GH5 footage. I shot this all in Sin D with sharpness at minus 5. You can find my GH5 settings videos in the description below. Um, typically I will just basically throw on my presets. I'll go to color and creative, boom, browse right there, moody LUT and apply that and it's pretty much good to go right out of the box. You just need to adjust the exposure a bit. Um, but today I'm gonna undo that and I will show you from scratch how I get this kind of moody look. As you can see, this shot is quite flat already. Um, there's not a lot of contrast. So I want you to basically make sure you're in your color editing profile in Premiere Pro. Uh, so select color up at the top here and op make sure you've gone window and opened up your scopes. So Lemaitre scopes is open and then you have them selected in the left panel here. Um, and then once you select your clip, you'll get all these readings here. And basically you'll see this is a very flat clip and all of the color is basically in the middle here and we wanna spread it out from zero to 255. So I'm gonna start in the color wheels and match area and I'm gonna take the shadows and drop them all the way down try and get them closer to zero and take the highlights and pop them all the way up and try and get them closer to 255. 
Now we'll go to the curve section because you'll still see they're not quite there. And I'm going to make a simple S curve uh, in the master curve section here, select the white one, and I just drop it down closer to zero and pop it up. And this is just going to give a lot more contrast on this image, which will be great. It's exactly what we're looking for. Um, so already we've got a lot of contrast, which is sweet, but we're kind of missing out on getting those blues. I want this to be kind of a cold image because it's for, uh, you know, it's for a winter video. I want the ocean to be kind of moody and all that. So in the color wheels and match area, this will be pretty simple, but I just want to take the shadows and slowly drop them down into the blue section here until I'm happy with what I see. And already it's starting to look pretty good. Maybe that's a bit much for the shadows. I might pop them up a bit more. And the highlights as well. I might drop a bit of a blue in there. Maybe that's a bit too much. Let's pop it back up. Pop this one up a little bit as well. And there you go. And already you can see this clip is starting to come along. Um, I would spend a bit more time with the white balance and the exposure, um, but already I'm quite happy with this. I just wanted to quickly show you guys how I can get a moody grade in Premiere Pro. Again, my GH5 LUT pack is linked below. If you wanna just instantly apply any of my looks, you can just drag and drop them on your footage and get a pretty good result right away. Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to quickly run you through how I get this kind of vintage Western look on my Panasonic GH5. And it's a look that I made for a very specific shoot in Chile. I wanted to make it look kind of old Western feel and that's when I came up with this look. Uh, it's worth noting that I also have my Panasonic GH5 LUT pack with over 100 different looks. So if you don't wanna start from scratch, you can simply just choose your look from my LUT pack, drop it on, adjust the intensity, and then you're good to go. But if you want to see kind of a behind the scenes on how this specific look was made, I'm going to run you guys through that right now. So worth noting at first, um, obviously footage needs to be well exposed. That's a no brainer. Uh, if you have blown out areas, everything is going to get a lot harder. And it's also worth noting in this look, I'm going to use a small grain and put it on top so you can find some free grain. Uh, overlays online uh, or they're also included in my LUT pack. So here we go. We're going to start with the clip and I'm going to open up Lumetri scopes on the left here so we can see what's going on. Um, we're going to want to keep everything within the zero and then the 255. So we see we could bring all of these up a little bit. It's just underexposed slightly, which is totally okay. So we're going to bring these up, still keep them below 255 but we're just gonna bring them up until they're just kind of touching the roof there. Perfect. And then we're gonna go to the curves and throw in a little S curve. Nothing too crazy. Just get some good contrast on this shot. Pull this back a little bit. All right, looking good. So now this is kind of the main part. We really want to warm up this shot and give it that Western look. I'm also gonna boost the mid-tones up a little bit right here, just to kind of soften it. And then I'm gonna go over to the color wheel and I'm gonna to start to add that warmth. So I'm gonna slowly drag the mid-tones into a bit of a yellow. Uh, you definitely don't want to overdo it, and it's easy to do that with this look. Um, it is a quite a stylized look. It won't work for every shoot, but um, I started, I made this for uh, this chili horseback shoot, and I loved how it looked. And since then, I've used it for a few different kind of summer festival shoots and have gotten a really good response on those. So pretty happy with it. Now, this is the part where I'm going to drop the grain on top to give it that vintage look. And if you don't have my LUT pack, you won't have this specific grain, but that's totally okay. You can find some online. Some of them are probably free as well. So we're going to drag this medium fine grain over top right there. And then we need to go to opacity. And let me see, I think I might do a soft light. So that's looking pretty good. So that's with and without the grain. Just gives it a little bit more texture. 
and we're almost there. I mean, we've almost got the look. I want to probably drop the blacks a little bit more just to give it a bit more contrast. Not too much, maybe just about four or so, minus four. And maybe, don't want to overexpose it, but pull up the whites a little bit and the shadows. And I think I could add a bit more warmth probably in the mid-tones. Don't want to overdo it, but. All right, there we go. That is kind of how I get my vintage look on the GH5. Again, if you want to just bypass the whole process and get access to 100 different GH5 looks, I have my Panasonic GH5 LUT pack in the description below. And then I'll show you guys how I export for Instagram. I actually have a preset already that I made a while ago, an export preset for Instagram based off their recommended file sizes. So I can just click up here and go to Instagram to pass. That's my preset, but I'll run you guys through. Basically it keeps the same aspect ratio, 1080 by 1350. Make sure your frame rate is the same. Field order progressive, square pixels, render at maximum depth, click that. And then profile high level 5.0 and I set my target bit rate to 30 and my maximum bit rate to 100 for Instagram. Uh, you know, everyone's a little bit different with that, but I like to overshoot a little bit. And yeah, those are the settings for my Instagram, uh, for Instagram when I'm posting to my feed. For Instagram stories, it's slightly different. Let me know if you want a video on that. Anyways, thanks for watching. This is just kind of a long, rambly tutorial if you guys enjoyed this please let me know below uh, i have a bit more time right now to sit down and do some of these long tutorials where you guys can just join me and kind of watch my process i'm trying to do my best to explain things i'm sure there's things that i glazed over or glossed over because i've been doing this for a while now